It being after six, let's call our board of directors meeting to order. Um, roll call will show Carla is not here. She's here. Oh, there she is. Okay. There roll she call is. shows everyone is here. There's no public hearing. Mm -hmm. And the first item up then is the consent agenda. I would like to pull three six. What's on tap? Me too. Uh, and I anything else to be pulled? I have a question on 3.3. 3.3, okay. Anything else, anything the public wants to pull? Okay. I'll make the motion to move the other items. Approval. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That's unanimous. So we go to 3.3. Three. Yeah, I just, um, I always have questions on certain things, I guess, and I just wasn't sure, and on the, uh, Warrants it's about the sixth one down. Once again, the state state uh, water resources control board water system fees for a year, or yeah, so thirty-eight thousand. Yeah, Taj and Christine are. will respond to that. It is quite a piece of change, isn't it? Thirty-eight thousand yeah, dollars. I didn't know what we give to the state Based water resources control board. Or this is uh, of the agenda, it's page 11, and of the warrants, it's the very first page, is about the sixth one down. $38,780. Yeah. So those are our drinking water fees annually, and it, uh, wow. prior to a couple years ago, they used to bill us on an hourly basis. Oh, that's right, and it's now under the State Water Resources Control Board. Right, yes. and so this is a flat fee based on the number of connections that they mm -hmm. recalculated, and some agencies got the short end of the stick, and some got the longer end of the stick. Mm -hmm. Ours went it, up. How did it work for us? It went up, and it'll be that every year. Um, ours fluctuated depending on what type of permit amendments we had going on any given year. Okay. Um, but, you know, if there was a year where we didn't have anything other than our routine water quality samples being sent to them, they really didn't expend much labor, and so it would, you know, maybe be a third of that. Okay. You know, it ranged from... Never. Uh, let me just say this: It was never more than that, or never even close okay. to thirty. Okay. So, but it is a uh, it's a way they calculate our, our annual fees. Okay. Thank you for that. Um, I'll, that was the only question yeah. I had. So I'll move approval of the warrants. I don't think we actually approve those, do we? It's part of the overall. Okay. All right. Well, I'll second your motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That's approved. Now we go on to what's on tap. Yes, I just wanted to present. This is our 20th year of doing what's on tap. This, so this is volume 20, number one. Mm -hmm. uh, for several years we did it um, out of with a consultant, and um, now we're doing all of this in-house. I, I did pull the item just to let you guys know we did find a couple of small typos that we're gonna be correcting as well as um, we still have like a fill in the blank for the web page for where we're doing the um, advertising for the standing committee positions. But if you have any other questions, um, we'd like to get some feedback. Anyone have anything to say, Tom? Yep, so you may have already noticed um, some of these, but at the first article on leaks, it says to go to page three and it actually goes to page two. So just for lack of confusion. Um, oh, right. mm -hmm. um, and then on, this is now the third page of the, um, what's on tap newsletter, but also on page 40 of the agenda under the future of water, talking about the Cape Town situation um, about, boy, 10 lines down from the beginning. We got that one. <laughs> you yeah. got that one? Yes. Okay. And I didn't know when on the picture, they just call it a dam, Is it, I, but since it's not really showing the dam, it's, I'm, I'm assuming the, the lake or reservoir behind reservoir. the dam. So I didn't know if it had a different name because it's just labeling it a dam and it doesn't look like a dam to me. It's the water behind the dam and the sediment behind the dam. <gasps> <laughs> that that's all. I mean, I don't know what the right name of it is. Maybe that's the only name. Um, that was what was listed on that um, source, but we can okay. describe and it. And then, and this is just a personal thing that just struck me. I wasn't sure if it was um, what everybody else wants, but I just wondered if we should have the remembrance of Laura Brown on the cover. 
instead of on the second page. And that can be something you guys can have. It. I just wanted to mention that's how it I just struck me. Um, on the Cornwell Tank Recoat and Rehabilitation Project, mm -hmm. the very end, I we mentioned that it's part of our ongoing capital improvement program and i don't know is that something we just need to we're our ongoing maintenance program would be the important thing to them i don't know wh what what you think about that but i think that's more accurate okay that's fine and then the last thing under pure water socal at the very end on page four or page 41 of the agenda um i don't know if it's this isn't typos or anything it's just um if we need to say what the total funding source f coming from the state water board is the fact that we got a two million dollar grants really important but whether they need to know that this is how much went out to the whole state just doesn't seem important to me and maybe makes it seem smaller in perspective uh, i don't know the part that says this funding is part of an 800 million mm -hmm. yeah yes. yeah i would think more interesting would be Two million is the maximum award under that program, which we got. So, yeah. right, that's something relevant and interesting. Okay. Right, opens up well, the possibility. I would say that, and I would also add that I think it's kind of interesting to find out how much the state. Be reminded how much okay. the state is paying out. I mean, mm -hmm. people here, the customers are also part of the state. Yeah, my last question is just on the very last um, sentence of that article. It says the $2 million grant is timely and extremely useful in supporting studies that are currently underway, such as water quality. Mm -hmm. It's not a study because there's groundwater modeling and an environmental review, but it's a water quality something. monitoring or, Test or testing or something. Okay. Maybe testing. Mm -hmm. Testing is accurate. Okay. I'm done. Okay. Anyone else? Well, on that, on that same item. Mm -hmm. The, uh, my understanding is that we have a CEQA review and there is no project until that's certified. So I think it's misleading to say we're, that we got funding for planning. It's really evaluation. That that's we're getting. a better way to put it, yeah. Well, it, it's, it already has evaluation there, so I just. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a plan, they call it a planning grant. But if you feel more comfortable, we can just cross off the planning. Um, again, my way of looking at it is we do not have a project to plan for until there's a CEQA. We want to evaluate. Or investigate or investigate. study or something. Yeah. Okay, I will um, Yeah, I understand that. that it's a Got planning. It. Okay. But it's, it, yeah. Um, and then <clears throat> um, just to comment on the, I agree with with Laura Brown being on the front cover. So how about we, we switch that out just so we get agreement here with Cornwell Tank. Does that sound good? Sounds good. And well, then okay. I have something to, Okay. I would like to see the update on Pure Water Soquel on the front page too, because okay. that's something I think our customers should see and it should be on the front that's cover. That's a good suggestion. Yeah. I agree so put that. those two on the front would be my but, guess. Um, I had a comment about the Cornwell Tank recoat. It'd be an opportunity to put a sentence in there about how much of our budget does go for mm. for maintenance of the system mm -hmm. just to so the people you know know that x number of million dollars per year goes towards maintenance so that'd be an opportunity to, to point that out okay our major cost right i'll add that anyone else I got a couple, I think. On page 40, um, the very bottom, um, the URL has got an XXX in it, so you need to finish that, which you probably already knew about. And um, under Employee Spotlight, I think the second paragraph should say, the executive assistant board clerk performs numerous duties in fulfilling her charge. True. It is true. Mm -hmm. We're not an it. You're not <laughs> an it. <laughs> <laughs> and so I think that's all I had. 
I think this yep. is the, the new gender neutral term. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, I okay. was looking at it as a, as an office, actually. One of the, you know, she was one what? of the officers in this uh, board meeting. So I was looking at it as an You could say, the, to make it clearer, then you could say the blah, blah, blah role. And then yeah, say the role it's. of the executive. Yeah. It's time. Yeah. Yes. I so got Karen Reese. <laughs> I will let the board clerk make that choice. <laughs> 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 Whether she wants to be a her or an it's. <laughs> I changed it to her. I changed okay. it to her. <laughs> right. All right. So I think we're done with that. Um, Thank you. We now go to the uh, oral communication. So it's time for anyone on the audience to address us on any item not on tonight's agenda. Good evening. Good evening, board members and staff. Stephanie Harlan, Capitola City Council, resident of Capitola for many years. The last meeting I was reminded of the brochure that we have for residents um, along Soquel Creek that is titled Care of the Soquel Creek for Residents or something like that, I forget. Anyway, um, I asked our staff to um, print some more and distribute it. And we would, I could distribute it and other volunteers could distribute it on both sides of the creek. They said the Commission on the Environment had already done that partially. And so I said, well, find out how partially it is, please. And let's print some more and make sure all the residents, because we have lots of new people in town. So I'm really glad that we're doing that. I also wanted to bring you some brochures that we have upstairs that we've had for a long time called Care for Your Creek. Together we can keep Soquel Creek beautiful. So I don't know if you've seen these before, but we've had them for a long time. I don't know how they're distributed, but I'm going to find out. And this would also be a good one to mail out to all the residents along the creek. We also have the brochure that you've seen, Slow It, Spread It, Sink It, A Homeowner's Guide to Turning Runoff into a Resource. That was done in 2015 by the Resource Conservation District funded by the State Water Resources Control Board, et cetera. It's a wonderful, wonderful brochure with fabulous pictures on how to do it. Huh. Shows you what to do. And Bruce's house is a wonderful example of this. <laughs> so in case you haven't seen it, I just wanted to pass this around. And I'm going to ask that we reprint those also and try to distribute more of those somehow. Bring them to public events or wh wherever we can to distribute them because that's a great resource. So. These are for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for doing that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Seeing no one. Um, any board comments? Got something. Go ahead, please. So I became aware of uh, a study comparing during the drought the effect of um, of what we did in terms of rates to fines done by uh, the city of. Santa Cruz, and it's by a, a PhD student in economics at UCSC, and there's a, a paper online, and seeing as we're, uh, we could well be entering into another drought, I think it would be good to, uh, if he's willing, to have a short presentation on that. It's a, you know, I've only glanced at the paper, but it, it is a rigorous approach to it, relying on the statistics. There's another paper that was just written in the last year. Um, it's about the rebound issue. And I did some study of um, three or four water districts in the Bay Area, not our Bay, but San Francisco Bay Area. And uh, so that might be relevant as well. Yeah, they actually, when, when I contacted him just to see if he was willing, he said, oh, I'm expanding the study to mm -hmm. these other areas. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a working paper that's online. and. That'd be interesting as well, but I think in terms of our situation, just the direct comparison of the two districts would, yep. would be most mm -hmm. pertinent. Sure. And and there, you know, did receive uh, information um, that uh, was very thrilled to be able to to work with our staff, and the staff was was uh, very friendly and and gave all the data that was needed for the for the study. Mm -hmm. So they did a good job on that. I'll reach out to that person then. Mm -hmm. I have a couple things I wanted to mention. Um, some of you may have noticed that the Orange County uh, District has done a formal world record. In 24 hours, they used 
hundred million and eight thousand gallons. And they actually had the monitors come in and, and verify that that happens. Uh, it's you know they've been doing that for quite a while, something like that. But you know they formally measured it and put it in the record book. So and certainly they deserve it, uh, you know, given how out there they've been with that capability. Um, another thing I wanted to put out is. Uh, our irrigation that we have, both for WDOs and uh, other things. You know, if you feel noticed, but you know, December we had almost no rain, and we're going to close out February probably with little or no rain. And you know, we've always kind of assumed tacitly that we had something like six months of rain when we didn't have irrigation going from our pipes, and that's no longer true. And as that person from the WDR said, you know, two weeks ago. This is a new normal, and uh, so we may want to look in and recalculate how much irrigation water is needed by particularly turf, because it's going to be, in fact, those of you who saw my climate change presentation, there was a study at UCSC which showed that, you know, we're going to go from basically four months of intense rain down to two months. So instead of being December, January, February, March of, uh, of lots of rain, uh, we will probably have just about two months of that kind of rain, and so usually January and February, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. right. But we'll see. Um, so we might want to consider doing that. Okay, so let's move on. Next item is the board planning calendar. Yeah, and I'll just on that I'll just point out that uh, next Wednesday the groundwater the Mid County the Santa Cruz Mid County Groundwater Agency Groundwater Sustainability Plan. <laughs> advisory committee um, will meet at the sheriff headquarters from 5 to approximately 8 p.m. so and that's open to the public and then it's um, it'd be on an upcoming month but uh, for the finance committee and I don't think it's shown on here we're, we're stop a month short but um, normally we would meet on April 23rd that's the finance um, advisory committee uh, and we'd like to change that to April uh, ninth from the 23rd to the 9th um, and I know Carla uh, director Christensen D director Daniels are on that um, Lather director Lather is a backup but uh, I'll put that out there and I'll send you an email if that can work for you and then we'll work um, with our public uh, uh, member also so going from uh, April 23rd to the 9th switch that out it, it would help us with our budget planning and there's some other um, things that we need to reasons we need to switch it all right any questions on those seeing none we go next to the special board assignments yeah and we've knocked most of the stuff off this list we're getting down pretty small there's a couple items at the end I think we want to bring back uh, specifically related to conservation but uh, I did receive I think what is the final draft report um, for the sky tim work seawater intrusion today from denmark and so my estimation is that it will be presented at the march 15th mid county groundwater meeting and maybe a week before a little bit of discussion around it here at this board meeting um, the author of the paper max uh, from denmark will be coming in for that presentation at the mga meeting okay. though so mm -hmm. that was important to so, so highly technical to have him be part of that discussion okay that's all any questions on that no questions from the audience okay item five three the organization wide abbreviated status update for conservation and customer service I just wanted to report that we are starting to take a look at our water year totals the water year ends on March 31st and um, well rainfall is is one of our um, uh, triggers for declaring various water stages um, the other is a groundwater emergency just looking at rainwater alone right now we're in a stage three which is our current stage so uh, we need a couple more inches to push push us from a stage three to a two if we're just looking at rainfall alone so if we get that before the end of the year we'll we'll see I think the end of the year is April 1st isn't it March 31st. March 31st. Oh, well, that's different. <laughs> <laughs> Not April Fool's Day. <laughs> <laughs> so it may be April Fool's Day. <laughs> okay, Taj. Wait, a quick question. Oh, go ahead. Um, yes. Sorry. 
So I just, as you said, you met with Seascape Golf Course and the, mm -hmm. and just and it said they are indicated an interest. So I just wonder if you could give any more details on that. They're very interested in in having a, a project there at the local level, um, but they are they have a parent company that's out of Los Angeles, and so they they essentially make the decisions. And so, um, but we have the general manager's support of the golf course, the local management. So the next step. The next step is um, well, we're we're moving ahead with Hydrometrics. We've asked them to give us a quote to calculate some of the things that um, the board was interested in knowing before we move ahead with any sort of soil borings. And then we're also developing a letter of interest that we plan to take to that parent company, okay. um, American Golf in Los Angeles, and get their buy-in. Um, it will be pretty noncommittal at this point because we don't know what we're doing yet, right. but um, just a general letter of interest. So, Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Taj. I just have a couple items on the uh, report. The first one uh, is, a, is an update on the corrosion testing that we're doing uh, mm -hmm. with Santa Cruz, City of Santa Cruz water, as well as our water. Um, there's a table in there that's worth mentioning. There's 12 weeks worth of testing that started on the 6th of February. And during those uh, weeks, they're going to be <coughs> looking at seven different water conditions. And they're basically um, our existing groundwater with a pH of 7.5, the uh, our the district's water with an adjusted um, orthophosphate, but the same pH, then the city's surface water at at 7.2 with orthophosphate. That's how it comes to us would come to us right now, um, and then their water adjusted up to 7.8 with orthophosphate, and then their water, um, then the next three. Uh, conditions five, six, and seven are alternating uh, city water, district groundwater, city water, and we wanted to make sure that the that specimens. Would be a, that'd be a yearly season. Then. Right, and we want to see how the specimens react. Mm -hmm. uh, they're changing the water out three times a week, and they're checking for um, turbidity, metals, and calcium. So we will report back, um, you know, as those results come in, but uh, it's underway and. Uh, we'll keep you posted. Okay. Any questions on that? Yeah, Thanks for explaining the, the table. <laughs> yeah, no, I, that was helpful. Yeah. Um, the choice of pHs, I take it, are based on what's likely to happen or is happening? Yeah, the baseline testing is basically our pH and their pH as it comes generally. Um, and then adjusting it up is usually comes with reduced, reduced corrosion. So gotcha. adjusting their pH up to match or a little bit above ours um, helps minimize corrosion, mm -hmm. the thought is. Although we will have their baseline test to see if there's any difference between doing that. Obviously, we want to see if it's worth doing or needed. Okay. Which, that, would, which of those would be the cheapest, the, the pH adjustment or the orthophosphate? Uh, the pH adjustment, most likely, because that's done at one location, right. um, and they would use carbon dioxide. Um, and I guess sodium hydroxide, I guess they'll see the combination of the two. Okay. Uh, the, the next item is just a little bit more in depth. I know there was an article uh, in the newsletter about Cornwell Tank. Um, we did get to a point where we felt a structural um, retrofit is needed for the, the roof structure that's supported by a center column. The tips of the I-beams are showing at least 50% loss in material, and so they're this week, they're going to be welding in a, a round ring uh, further outward where there's enough metal, and that'll tie into the existing column, and that, that is a change order uh, for about 27000 mm -hmm. But it's a significant amount of work, yeah. if you can imagine. It's a 10-foot diameter ring supported by the, the center column. So I'll present some uh, updated photos when that gets done but it's scheduled for this week. And the corrosion is just a normal thing to happen? Uh, well, no, not normally. Uh, it is in an area, you know, contrary to what you'd believe, think, the area that is not underwater is more susceptible sure. to corrosion just due to the humid environment and there's more oxygen. Um, so 
anything above the water line is looks a lot worse than anything below the water line but it, typically I think when they built the tank they may not have done as good of a job as we can do today with coating technology and and uh, I can't I, I don't know this was built you know 20 some odd years ago and I don't know if the inspection of the coating was done as rigorous as it is, as it is done today with the controls and you know holding them to doing it but so I hope that this this coating will last longer and we'll get a better coating life Oh no. Um, I don't have an, anything to add to this report unless you have any questions. Guess not. Thank you. Thanks. Mm -hmm. And special projects. So I just have two things I'll point out. Um, in terms of the education and outreach, um, each of you received a little flyer um, at the dais that just kind of is promoting that the educational signage and exhibits that we are creating as part of the Bureau of Reclamation grant for the community water plan and components of the Pure Water Soquel um, should be done next month. So we are going to be having an, a little grand opening and ribbon cutting ceremony that we'll be talking to the board about. It's pretty exciting. And we're also having um, a day prior to that an unveiling to the staff. Uh, we also will be having the trailer at quite a few places. In fact, Vias started to schedule um, the trailer to go to the farmers markets and then lastly just wanted to let you guys know we did receive comments back from the feasibility study for the uh, groundwater replenishment um, recycled water project that we had for the bureau and we'll be meeting with them next week it's just some minor comments before they accept our final uh, feasibility study is complete was that they wanted us to add more to the recommended project section so I think it is uh, uh, what we did was we had outlined and proposed the project as where it stands now which is a component based several different options in terms of load location for the treatment facility and the pipelines and the recharge wells and when they read it, it looked like we just kind of had all of these options and they really, from a finance and funding standpoint, they really want to see a more defined project description. So we were adding language back in there to describe the, the original efforts, which was recycled water, reclaimed water, and then narrowing that to look at non-potable irrigation uses and then potable reuse. And so the indirect potable reuse project, the Pure Water Soquel is the, the narrowing and the recommended project with different components that are being evaluated. So we are revising that chapter to resubmit to them. And hopefully by the mid to late uh, spring, we should have a complete feasibility s accepted. And then uh, that would go to uh, sub be submitted to Congress as a finding that our feasibility is complete and that we would be a recognized Title 16 feasibility study project. So they don't need to know the pipeline alignments or the locations for the filtering or? From a feasibility standpoint, we've gone one step further in kind of evaluating more components, mm -hmm. but um, at that level, we've, we've fulfilled that requirement. Good. Any other questions? Okay. Finance? Yes, since Leslie Strom is uh, down in Southern California at a conference, I'll just mention that we just got notified for the second year in a row the districts received the California Society of Municipal Finance Officers Operating Budget Excellent Award, and it's the uh, second time we've gotten that. I think the plaque is in the mail, so when it uh, does <laughs> arrive, we'll, we'll make a little photo op of it, but we're very proud of that. Um, you know, it's a third party recognition that we're keeping things on track as far as a, um, from a financial perspective. HR. I have nothing to report in this agenda, but I'm here to answer any questions if you have anything. Questions? Okay, thank you. Thanks, Tracy. General Manager. Great, and, I, and I'll, I'll take a little of Tracy's time here then. Um, I've got a couple items up and I'll just point them out. Uh, San Francisco uh, began construction on a recycling plant. Wow, that's fantastic. I'll just point out that the Pure Water Soquel um, project that's being evaluated 
uh, would produce, you know, two to three times the amount of water which they're estimated make it in purer water, much purer water, and be, you know, roughly a third of what their cost is. So, you know, kudos to us for uh, keeping costs down. Arizona is moving the ball forward uh, direct with direct potable reuse, and while we're not doing that, we want to just take the purified water and replenish the groundwater basin to prevent further seawater intrusion. I think it is, it just gives a nod to how far that, um, that field's coming, that, uh, you know, they're looking at putting it directly in the pipe. And the water tax proposal that uh, was being floated uh, by Bill Monning has kind of taken on a, a, a different shape. Uh, the governor's inserted something into his budget that would tax um, uh, each customer one to ten dollars per month. So we'll see. Mm -hmm. We'll keep tabs on that whether that makes it uh, makes it through. And then the last one was just uh, Cape Town. I mean, um, you can go ahead down to the pictures, actually, Shelley, if you would. You know, it just. If, if this shouts anything, what's going on there, I mean, this is the first really modern city that we've had to face this level of crisis. Here they are buying a bunch of uh, bottled water and up, up above they're going to Springs. I think it just, uh, to me, the lesson I take home is diversification's resiliency because they're, they're, their reservoirs are going dry and they have all their eggs in one basket. And now they're building desalination plants, you know, in a hurry, and I'm sure that's you know, not the most cost-effective way to approach it. So I just wanted to point that out, and that's all I have. Any questions? Well, I'll just comment also, Cape Town is actually part of the, has a similar Mediterranean-type climate mm. that uh, that our section of California has. So it's got the wet winter, dry summer. So they are, they're observing in the Southern Hemisphere exactly what we're experiencing here in California in the Northern Hemisphere. The other interesting thing is that they did try to do desal, and it was voted <laughs> down because they didn't think they needed it. And that was, I think, five years ago. Hmm. So hmm. I think they're, they're going to list the names of the people that voted against it <laughs> in the paper. <laughs> wow. Thank you. Okay. I'm not going there. Um, all right. So anyone in the public wish to comment on these uh, items we've just been through? Seeing no one, let's see, we go to the district council. Only a few items. The coal matter, which Mr. Cole was somebody who challenged Prop 28, under Prop 218, was set for February 19th, but not unexpectedly. I think the court clerk took a look at the volume of paper and moved it over now to March 23rd. So that'll be heard on that date and we can report to you after that. Uh, there's been another case, there was Ramona, Water District uh, about a month ago that held at the appellate level that um, you don't have to have, you don't have to protest to bring a Proot 218 measure. Mm -hmm. Marin had a case that went the other way at the trial court, but after Ramona was decided, the judge granted a new trial. So now Marin's the same way as Ramona. So that's likely to go up on appeal, and Aqua's participating in both of those appeals. Um, and finally, on uh, the SB 831, uh, we heard today that the uh, California Special Districts Association is going to oppose it. And I checked in with Aqua this afternoon, and they're going to oppose it as well because it's just so broad in the impact on special districts and water districts. And it appears to violate Prop 218 because if if the people that are building ADUs don't have to pay any water fees of any sort, then everybody else has to pick up the additional expense. Right. So that's my report. Okay, thank you. Any questions? From the public? All right, we have no item 6.1, no will serve letters, so we go to 6.2, water demand offset, new applicant offset generating project. Yeah, so when we revamped the water demand offset program last year, the board um, wanted to give flexibility to um, people to come up with creative solutions to offset their development projects. And so um, you asked staff to go and develop a, a basically a proposal or an application process um, for people to bring those projects forward to you. 
and a, a framework for you to evaluate the projects. And so tonight we are bringing forward our first applicant's project and it's for a um, development in SoCal. The applicants are proposing to build 16 condominiums and townhomes at 5701 SoCal Drive. They are currently on our wait list in the number 29 position. So um, that's gonna be a while for them if, if they are to wait for toilet rebate applications to come in to meet their offset. Um, their total offset requirement is 4.56 acre feet. And the project that they are bringing forward is to install buoy water monitoring devices at district customer homes. And those devices um, basically will alert a customer through an app Anytime there's a leak, um, they also provide an automatic shutoff function. So if someone's out of town and they get a, a notice that there's a leak, they can shut off their water. And the other benefit of the buoy system is that um, they also provide customers with metrics on how their water's being used on a daily basis. So, you know, you used uh, 20 gallons today by showering or, or X amount of gallons for clothes washing. Um, they have gone through and done a, a pretty thorough um, job on their application and they've cited references from Environmental Protection Agency on nationwide leaks. Um, they pulled information from our urban water management plan to come up with the, the amount of water savings per device. And so um, what we're bringing forward tonight is their application which is included as attachment two. And um, the criteria that the board is looking at is permanence. Is the project something that will produce water savings for 20 years? Um, additionality, is it something that wouldn't otherwise happen through building code changes, um, retrofit on sale ordinances, um, or district rebates? And measurability, is it water savings that can be um, measured with a, a certain degree of accuracy. And so I think that um, of those three criteria, uh, permanence is um, the units, the buoy units are estimated to last 10 years and our criteria is 20. So technically we would need to divide that water savings by two. However, um, the technology could be um, supplemented by AMI, full um, automatic meter, meter installation throughout our district within 10 years. So maybe in this case, 20 years would be moot um, because that technology would do basically do the same thing. Um, additionality, I think they score fairly high on that. Um, this is not something that is gonna be mandated by any regulatory agency in the near future. Uh, measurability, I think, is also very, very high because the units rely on a badger meter. Um, Badger's a, a common meter manufacturer with um, relatively high accuracy, similar to our master meters that we use. So um, I think the measurability is good. And so with that, I, I just want to um, say that the applicants are here tonight. We have Jonathan and Tim Gordon from Workbench. They are the development company. And we also have Hillary Bryant here tonight representing Bowie. So if you have any specific questions about their project or the technology, um, I'm sure they would be happy to answer those questions. I also want to state that um, we were a little uncertain as to the degree of detail that the board wanted um, staff to include in a report if you wanted if you were seeking recommendations from staff about how we felt about an application or we felt it was valid um, so any input that the board wants to provide if you'd like to see more detail from us or or recommendations or that sort of thing uh, please let me know and we'll we'll make a, a change the next time around so um, for the first time we just wanted to get it out and present unbiased information and, and kind of let you um, evaluate it. So that's all I had to say. Thank you. Okay. Any questions of staff? Not yet. Okay. Let's open the public hearing. Come and talk to us about what you want to tell us.
I'm Tim Gordon. Well, thanks for your time tonight. And Jonathan. So we have a company in town, Workbench, and we are development, design, and construction all in one shop. Um, this project for us at SoCal, as Shelly mentioned, is likely going to be 15 units after all. 40% um, affordable and hoping, hoping to be able to help the community out by providing affordable housing and just more housing. Um, a little bit about that project. Uh, the key thing buoy tonight is a device that sits on the water line um, after the main meter, but before it splits off to landscaping or other areas of the house. It measures just like a typical water meter with a lot more detail and puts that into an app that customer can see um, exactly how much water they're using based on the fixture type. So they can say, okay, my landscape used this much water, my toilet, I flushed it three times today at these times and it used this much water. The key thing that it does is leak detection and awareness. So a little bit about leak detection. EPA estimates 10% of all water usage in the home is due to leaks. Yeah, according to the EPA, um, <clears throat> yeah, 10% is due to leaks, which if we, uh, according to, um, if we use a amount of 135 gallons per day, that's 13 gallons, 13 and a half gallons per day that's just per customer that's being lost uh, due to leaks. <clears throat> the buoy system uh, excels at uh, fixing this problem because what it does is basically notifies you of any uh, aberrant water usage. So if you can determine, you know, how the, uh, like, where your water usage is going as far as, you know, this much to a shower, this much to your dishwasher, this much to your uh, sink, then anything extra is obviously a leak and needs to be fixed. And that's the kind of thing that, um, wouldn't really be determined by uh, other water metering systems. Uh, they would often, like when you get a water bill, you see how much water you're using, but you don't really know exactly where it's going in the home. And so you can't really determine, you know, whether it's a leak or whether you just used extra water in your faucet that day. So uh, the buoy really eliminates that problem pretty much altogether, uh, as well as uh, in emergency situations, um, we actually had a property that had, uh, did have a big leak that the customer didn't know about. And then within a couple days, like their entire yard was flooded and there was like inches of water underneath the house that's just, you know, <coughs> gone to waste. And if we would have had the, uh, buoy system in there at the time, then that would not have been the case and all that water would have been saved. This is our project, <coughs> the one we just purchased about a week after we bought it. Yeah, it was <laughs> so before we could even set anything up. Yeah, <laughs> so the first thing that happened was an explosion of a water pipe under mm -hmm. the house, so that's fun. Yeah. <laughs> um, but in addition to the leak savings, another really great benefit of buoy is it provides insight into how the customer is using water. Um, many customers have changed their usage once they actually see where their water is going. Uh, for example, a lot of times you just get your bill and you know, like I said, you don't know where it's going. So you don't really know how much water you're using when you take a shower or how much water it actually takes to wash dishes or things like that. And um, uh, it really, having that data right in front of you really provides a uh, incentive for people to, you know, take shorter showers, to use an HE dishwasher instead of hand washing the dishes, uh, to use a high efficiency clothes washing machine, um, or even get like a tankless or uh, inline water heater. Um, a uh, couple of examples uh, just from uh, buoys that have already been installed is uh, there is one customer who discovered that he was using over 80 gallons of water per day just to wa uh, hand wash his dishes. And he realized that by buying an efficient dishwasher, he would actually use only about three gallons a day. So he's saving over 75 gallons of water per day um, just by using an efficient dishwasher. And uh, there's another instance where uh, Bowie allowed a customer to quantify 
that there was a toilet running in a guest bedroom. And it was the kind of thing that he figured was just a small problem. And uh, it turned out to be that he was able to determine that it was using over 150 gallons of water per day, which is a huge amount, you know. And he realized that it's the kind of thing that he should probably get fixed sooner rather than keep putting it off. Um, and as well, uh, Bowie's actually been able to catch leaks in brand new irrigation systems that were just installed. And that's the kind of thing that it's underground, you don't see it, and you pretty much never know that there was a leak there. And this was able to catch it first day. Does it do it through sound? Uh, basically, it, what it does is measure, measure the water usage and record all of the usages. Um, and it's able to determine like when something is turned on and off uh, as far as like you know time of day and um, things of that and determine like over time it kind of learns how you use your water and whenever uh, you flush a toilet like it knows what to expect you know for a <coughs> flushing toilet and then it is able to determine other things like you know how much you use for a sink how much you know uh, duration of you know how long it takes a uh, clothes washer to run for example so it uses all those data metrics to determine uh, where the water's actually going. Um, so. so in other words, it kind of guesses. So you can easily confuse it by doing your dishes at a strange hour, like midnight. Or um, I believe it's also based on pressure as well. And Hillary knows mm -hmm. this a little bit yeah. better. Than yeah, I'm happy to. Add, it, it, it's measuring the flow of the water. So. Up here and use the microphone so we can yeah. record it. <laughs> it's a local company. It's a local mm -hmm. company. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I didn't want to. I wanted to let them do their presentation. Um, I'm Hillary Bryant with Bowie Labs. Um, thank you all for your service. I know what a tough job you have. Um, and it, it's actually measuring the flow of the water, and it's it's uh, running off the customer's Wi-Fi. So it's a single device. It's installed typically on homes um, where the shutoff valve is. And it's measuring that flow. It sends the information via the customer's Wi-Fi up to the cloud. It disaggregates the information. It's all based on machine learning algorithms. So it's the flow, the time of use, um, a data set that we have. And it gets um, the device, because of the machine learning algorithms, gets smarter over time. But every device in your home has a signature. Toilets, uh, showers, sinks, things like that are very easy for us to pick up. The harder signatures, it takes some time to learn. It takes the first couple of weeks are the washing machines, the dishwashers, depending on the cycle, the amount of um, water being used by each device. That, that takes a little longer. But within the first two weeks, we're about 90% accurate over the entire home. And then you can also correct the device. So you can say, no, that wasn't my dishwasher. That was actually my washing machine. And then the device will learn that. So over time, it gets, it gets significantly smarter, it continues to learn. And sometimes we'll see things. Um, for example, if you, all of a sudden you put on a pressure washer, we would identify that as this is an unusual water use. It would look, it would sort of present as if it was a leak. Um, but if if that was something, an activity that you did frequently, then the device would learn that that's a, a, a signature that it should know. So it, we have about, I think we're up to about 20 something categories of different, this is the app, this is actually my house, I'm not gonna show you because I don't wanna shame myself in my water use. Um, <laughs> but it, it, it tells you, you know, you can categorize um, everything from a water filter to a water softener regen cycle. So it, 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 we have a variety of categories um, that we've learned over time. And, and do, you, d do you tell it what it is or does it learn automatically? It learns automatically. The first two weeks we don't send anybody leak alerts, we're just learning. Um, it very quickly, like I said, it'll learn some of those basic shower sink sh um, functions. Um, and you can help it learn more quickly by, you can categorize it if, like I said, if we like get it wrong. Like at 3 o'clock I had a dishwasher on. Mm -hmm. You can do that, but after two weeks, all of a sudden you'll start seeing all the categories come in. How many customers have this already? Um, we have um, hundreds of customers. We're now across the U.S. We're in 48 states and then um, Hawaii. I'm excited about Hawaii. I'd like to have more devices in Hawaii. Um, we don't have any in Alaska yet. Uh, we, we spent two and a half years really testing um, in pilot programs across the country because we wanted to know 
as you all know, and we didn't know as well, plumbing is not standardized in any way, shape, or form. So we wanted to know not only about plumbing setups in different areas, um, plumbing codes, but then additionally um, really take a look at different climates, how that affected the buoy, and things like I didn't know they had whole house humidifiers in Colorado, but apparently that's a thing there. So there's the devices that are area specific that we needed to spend some time learning on. So this is really new, it sounds like. Uh, we we've been and we've been working on this for two and a half years, but it, it's an it's a new the it's a new category. It's a smart home device. Um, there are more and more companies coming out with similar devices. Um, what we're how we differentiate ourselves is we really give you real time information. The device checks in every minute, so we're giving you real time information about what's being used in the home, and we also give you real time information about leaks that we're finding, and then. I could shut off the water at my house from my phone right now. I could turn it back on too, which they would probably appreciate. Um, mm -hmm. but, but it allows you to not only understand your water use and identify leaks, but then it allows you to do something about it. So you're shutting off the water to the whole house should you find a leak. Do you know what percentage of homes have Wi-Fi? You know, I don't. I don't. Um, we uh, currently are just operating on Wi-Fi. Um, and haven't found that to be a problem, although uh, in this year we'll be piloting programs with um, a cellular capabilities, but we haven't, we're, we're not there yet. Okay. Um, and that's an added expense. So the device is the cost of the device, the installation, and the data for life. So we're not charging people a subscription for that information, which is why we're using Wi-Fi. I have a concern about the app. I mean, I can see this being really useful t for water wonks who want to know, mm -hmm. you know, all the water they use today, but like e the uh, PG&E has a similar kind of facility for power usage, and in theory you can look at that. And I've never bothered. I don't know if you well, I have. You have you? I look at it. So you're you're electricity wonk. <laughs> I'm so. a everything wonk. <laughs> but but I think what's being proposed here is is not going out and finding wonks to give this to, but just kind of normal people. So if you're if you don't even know about the app and wouldn't wouldn't use it even if you did. What services can this if, provide that people would then benefit from? If you never, if you didn't care a bit about what the water use was in your house, mm -hmm. um, but you still, I, I can't imagine somebody not worrying about their home leaking at some point. Um, you know, you could never look at this, but we could still send you notifications. We think there's unusual water use, so we've identified a leak. Mm -hmm. And you could shut the water off from the app, so you don't have to check in with the app for us to push notifications okay. to you about so the leak. leak notification. So uh, that's where I, I, I think that um, even if you, if you weren't concerned about your water use, um, then perhaps there's still a value to you if you're, if you're worried about your home leaking. Have you contacted any uh, customers in our district already? To we do have customers. In this? We oh. have customers in, in your district already. Already? Yes. I wonder if um, people could get a reduction in their insurance policy for their house because of having this. Only because yeah. I did have two different occasions leaks that were pretty um, devastating. Because we didn't know the leak was there, it was behind a wall, and all of a sudden the whole wall <laughs> crashed in <laughs> my son's um, closet and my daughter's ceiling. Two different things. So I would have loved to have had that. In fact, we've done a large one of our first large-scale pilots was with a, one of the top ten insurance providers in the country, um, and in other areas, at state of California, I believe, has um, insurance laws that don't pr allow for that. But other in other states, you can get five to ten percent off your. Um, annual homeowners insurance pol policy if you have a leak detection device installed in the home. If not in California? I, I don't believe it applies to California. So I was looking at your spec sheet. One of the one of the things we have to evaluate is how permanent this would be. And your spec sheet has a one-year limited warranty. So I know you don't want to have liability for 20 years down the road, but right. Can you comment on whether this device will really work for 10 years or five years, or do you have any idea yet? Because it sounds like it's a relatively new device. It is a relatively new device in the field, but the, um, the device, the, the components that we have inside the device are designed for 10-year lifespan, so we're certainly not at a 20-year lifespan. I don't know, um, you know, how that, whether that's being measured against, um, you know, I don't. I, I'm not aware of whether toilets have a 20-year lifespan or shower head, low-flow shower heads. I don't. I don't know the comparison, 
but from um, a standpoint of the lifespan expectancy, it's 10 years. There's a year warranty on the hardware, and we're certainly, um, you know, we're, we built the company here in Santa Cruz. We're, we're growing. We're on a nationwide scale now, and, and our intention is to um, provide the best service for our customers, but I can't, I would never want to get up here in front of you and say absolutely yeah. 20 years right, because right, we, haven't, we haven't been in the field that long. Some other things on permanent that um, we, can, we can look at is that if someone has a small leak or minor leak, the big blowouts they're going to find, right, eventually. Something smaller, a toilet, something like this, they're never going to find without a boom. You know, there's something that it's going to hit the system as just leaks. You know, they're, ne <coughs> excuse me. they're never going to find those unless they try to. Um, as well as the just the overall awareness that it brings, people that buy a buoy that are water conscious aren't going to keep it to themselves. You know, they're going to talk to their friends, hey, I have this cool app, this cool product, this is what it does. It saved me this much money <coughs> per month or per year, right? They're putting money into buying a buoy. They're not going to waste their money on that and not use it, not let people know about it. And I think those are some other permanent things that you could look at. I know, we're kind of not worried about us if we had it at our house. I just said I had one of those hidden leaks in a garden hose and things, but uh, that, yeah, didn't run up a catastrophic breakdown, but it did cost a couple hundred dollars a month for a couple months before we mm. figured out where it was. But uh, I still am kind of concerned about the ability of the average customer to use it. Um, and, you know, is there a training program or a training uh, video, or is there a way to see how the thing actually works on everybody's phone or iPad? We do, and it, it's it's online on our website. My apologies. I it was my understanding that it was um, Workbench's proposal, and I didn't um, bring any of our um, you know our advertising. But it's we have really made it. It's a consumer focused product. We've really tried to make it very consumer friendly. It's a very simple app. Um, my children who are 12 and 14 they obviously use a lot of apps but they're very, you know it's it's something that kids can use adults can use it, we really have tried to i mean it, it's breaking down um uh your water use by devices and icons that are very consumer friendly it gives you a use over the day by comparison to you know yesterday to today last week to this week, month over month. So you're really um, trying to give people just general information and then information about, you can drill down onto how much water does my dishwasher use in every cycle. Some people will care about it, some people will not care about it, but there is um, an amazing, uh, there's amazing power in giving people the information and the data. They don't understand something if they're looking at it in CCFs, but if you give it to them in gallons, if you give it to them by appliance, if all of a sudden they can say, Gosh, that running toilet, it, that was 150 gallons overnight. I had no idea that just letting a flapper valve go, because I don't hear it, I don't think about it, it's not causing any damage. $200. It's a lot of water. It's an astounding $200. amount of water. Um, and we, we put a, a buoy in a house just last week over in the Seabire area, and we found four leaks within the first you know, 24 hours of it being on a house. Two were in the irrigation, and two were in the house, and one was a dripping shower head that they had just ignored. Oh, it's just a few drips a minute. I don't pay attention to it. But cumulatively, it was over 100 gallons a day. And, the, you know, they just, they just weren't aware because they didn't have the information. And I really think that this is the way, um, I, you know, I, I know that you're considering AMI in the future. I think most agencies are doing that. Um, when we expensive. started, when we, it's expensive. And when we started this project, people were, we were the only ones doing it, um, and now I really think it's um, it's starting to become an industry standard. And the nice part about this is, if somebody finds a leak, they can shut their water off. I mean, we've had people call and say, "I was on a camping trip, and the water shouldn't have been going at my house. I just shut my water off. I didn't think about it again, so I got home." Um, so it really gives people the ability to um, change how they interact with their water. Um, and a better understanding of, of how it's being used. And for some people, they may not care about that, but anyone who's had a leak, or I can't tell you how many leak damage stories I've heard now, um, <laughs> it's it's <laughs> shocking. And they're catastrophic, you know, $300,000 in damage. Um, but if you can if you can have this as a peace of mind, then then for some people that will that'll make a big difference. 
I'm wondering about the measurability for this. Um, this estimate from EPA, do you know how old that estimate is or the technology uh, they use? It's from a couple of years ago, but we in aggregate, I was actually talking to Shelley about this before, um, over the two and a half years we've been working on this, we've, we've found um, that it's from our data and all the homes that we've had it on, um, it's about nine and a half, nine point eight percent of of water use is just going to leaks. And part of the reason we started the project was it was the height of the drought. Um, and gosh, if we could just cut out the leak part of it, um, that that's going to make a difference. That that's going to get you halfway to the restrictions that were in place at the time. My concern is that not all homes are the same. Yeah. Like you know, before we had a system where we would go and read the meter every two months. And all we'd see is the number before was X and the number now is Y. And we've gone to AMR now. And in fact, Shelley can tell you that you know, when something runs all the time, i.e. a leak, our system can tell her that. And we send out people all the time to people's homes. So the question is, what leaks would you find that Shelley's, you know, we spent millions putting this uh, AMR system in. What's, what leaks would this system find that our system doesn't already find? Perhaps maybe exactly the same. I, you know, I wouldn't know that comparison, but the fact of the matter is we're checking in every minute, so we'll find a leak in the first 60 seconds, first five minutes, whatever that, you know, the smaller leaks, we take a little longer to identify. The burst pipes, the big leaks, we notify you right away, and if okay. we get it wrong, we'd rather get it wrong than, than not notify you, mm -hmm. but then you can shut your water off immediately. So the difference between the response time is really, you know, if you're at the office, mm -hmm. um, you oh, know, two weeks versus a uh, few hours then. And, oh, I, and okay. I've shut the water off in my house uh, over concerns. One time it was a bunch mm -hmm. of kids coming okay. in from surfing and using too much water. Mm -hmm. But, you know, there's, there's times where if that were a real leak, it would make a difference. And we have, um, we've caught those burst pipes in the wall um, when somebody's at work. Mm -hmm. They shut the water off and, and get back and find, you know, they've at least stopped it before okay. the damage is okay. catastrophic. So that's and the difference, but okay. I don't know in terms well, of the question about the measurability. measurability. You, right. you may catch exactly the same ones. It's just in terms but of... We're, we're we're I have a question, though. We, we may be able to give data on when the leak happened, but I don't think they get it until their monthly bill. So right. When we it read the meter. It could run for a whole month. No, well, it could. 29 days. It could run or could run for one day. Right. So two weeks would be kind of the average. Yeah. So it could save two weeks of a leak. Yeah. It, and it's probably those irrigation ones that people don't notice, especially right. when conditions are really dry and it mm -hmm. just it goes for a long time before you notice that that patch is pretty green and everything else is brown, <laughs> right. those kind of leaks we right. find. I'm right. also not sure how the product we have works exactly, but if, for example, it's a s something small that's just all the time, maybe you're, s I don't know if this system picks it up from month to month, if there's not a huge gain or... I think it reads every 15 minutes or Our, something. Yeah, but we, um, we only detect the leaks when we drive by and pick up the reads once a month. Right. And so if, you know, you had a leak that started on day one after we had read the meter, then that's, you're not going to get notification from us until day 30 Does it pick or day up 31. Oh yeah, yeah. We can um, detect leaks down to um, one sixteenth to one eighth. One eighth is probably about the average. One eighth of what? One eighth gallon, gallon per minute. So Shelley, does our? I was under the impression ours also detected leaks based on there being continuous use. So an intermediate. Yeah, continuous onward. use is a, a pattern, I guess, and a logarithm that set up. So. Um, uh, that's one of the leaks. Um, or with toilets, you generally see like uh, a gallon used and then um, another hour later, another gallon, you know, when toilets are running. So there's definitely patterns when you download the data from the meters. Those are the data logs that we could pull. Um, but like Tom said, we're only, we're only reading it once a month right. when we drive right. by, and that's when we're notifying people if they have a leak. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I like I like yeah no no more questions. We didn't have to comment. We need to let the public, public yeah. as well. Yeah. Thank you. So anything else to add on? Nope. I I just brought along a device if you wanted to see it and yeah. let you go. Yeah. Y'all want to see the device? No, no, Thanks so much, Charlie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, no, I think that was pretty much it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Thank Hillary. He wants to see the device. I do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>
I've got the picture. But you, the actual devices. About like that. Yeah, it's bigger. Keep going. Okay. Oh, you should. So, anyone in the public wishes to address us on this item? <laughs> Seeing none, we'll close that. Oh, it comes with a carrying case. <laughs> right. <laughs> this is what I thought it would look like. Mm. <laughs> oh, yeah. This is the battery. It looks like, what do they, what do they call those baby bombs? How do they replace the battery? <laughs> yeah, try to get a new CSA. Mm -hmm. <laughs> As a water provider, we're, we're held to meeting the um, NSF standards for no lead in all of our meters and components. And uh, um, National Safety Science, Science, Science Foundation. Foundation. Um, On the same National Science Foundation? No. Uh, something else. Oh, it's NSF. I don't think NSF would have that. It doesn't uh, matter. I'm not sure of the exact. National standards. Uh, yeah. Christine, do you happen to know what NSF <laughs> exactly stands for? <laughs> make her come all the way up here, sorry. Um, a few years ago, they changed their name officially to just NSF International, and it doesn't stand for anything anymore, <laughs> but I think it used to stand for National Sanita Sanitary Foundation or Sanitation Foundation. So. All right. so all of our products that touch water have to be certified uh, the manufacturer has to go through the certification process. This device, um, all of the components have been through that, but the device itself has not. And um, so that's one issue. But okay. All right. Any comments or? Well, I, 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 I want to go first. Me. You go. I, <laughs> I like creativity. It's very creative. Um, I question the numbers. Just uh, in terms of, it, I think there's a lot of unknowns there on just how much water it's going to save, and that's really what you know. The toilet is a known. You know, there's a certain number of flushes, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but I, I guess my leaning is is to to try it at a, a smaller scale and see if. You know, track it and see what see what happens with it, and uh, you know, and do our best to to say this is what you know the credit should be, the offset credit should be for this device. That is, that's actually one of the things I was going to suggest too. So I, I I agree with that idea. Like, if there's any way to do a little pilot and see what the actual savings might be with some customers, because it's hard I'll to volunteer. It's hard, to, it's hard to adapt that. But if you're looking at leaks, they ha are fairly unusual. Sporadic, so, yeah. yeah. So we yeah. But just if it, but even if it changed, it Habit. may change water use just with, without the leaks. I agree, yeah, maybe, I agree maybe. it wouldn't be enough time maybe to well, catch a maybe representative maybe number of leaks. Maybe some of our high-end users. But also, I was just gonna mention that um, even though I know that it's probably limited the number of people that will be water wonks and look at the app, if you're going to do any of this, even if we develop a system 10 years from now that is all like that, it's going to have to be presented on some media, like whether it's their computer or their phone. So I don't think that's necessarily a limiting factor because somebody's going to have to interface with it in some way. I think those people that had that big leak because somebody had turned on their um, hose and it had been on for a month would have really appreciated having this. And then being able to turn it off. Right. Well, I think one thing we could do right off the bat is we, we've been finding and fixing leaks because of our AMR system for quite some time. So we have some records of that. So we could give them credit for two weeks of savings for each leak. So if we find a leak of X gallons, we would assume that it could have been gone on average two weeks, and they would have fi fixed it in one day. So And use that as the, that as the, as the metric? Yeah, metric. that's a possibility. I'd like to see staff come back in, in consultation with, with the with the uh, developers who are proposing with some some rationale for how much credit it should be. Um, 
taking into account, you know, 10 years versus 20 years. Um, and I hope that it, you know, pencils out that it, that it that's financially feasible because I think there's a big upside to it. And I agree that not everybody is going to change their habits and not everybody's going to have a leak. But um, I do think that it that has the potential to save water. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah I was going to say, I agreed with the idea of sharing. Um, sharing some of that data, I noticed that you had the toilet offset is, what, 290 toilets, and the buoy offset was 150. So I was trying to think of some way to play with some of those numbers to get things started at least. So maybe that would be, uh, especially if you had some pre-identified customers who are interested already. I mean, that's how a lot of uh, people are trying to build homes or add on to their homes. They get their neighbors and, you know, they start building a customer yeah, I, I don't think it'll be hard relation. to find people who want this. Yeah, I don't so, either. but I was thinking some mixture or some... Besides Rochelle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some fraction of... Uh, I'd be interested, too. Of yeah. the, you know, some proportion, I mean, not some proportion we might be able to... Um, in March, March 4th and 5th, I think, they have the Imagine H2O in San Francisco where there's like, I don't know, 20... Um, Types, 20 groups of people who have new technology and they bring it to um, Water Environment Federation and this Imagine H2O and they're the cutting edge, you know, the ones that are leading the way and there's so much technology just out there. There's people that can detect a leak from a satellite and tell you where it is in your road. And it's just amazing the things. I saw the, I went to the one last year, I'm going to this one too. So I think I'd like we to make a motion. Yeah, go for it. Let's go it. So I'd like to direct staff to work with the developers on um, coming up with a more definite metrics on um, what the what the WDO offset should be for this device, and to propose uh, some type of pilot study, and included in that would be a reasonable length of time to evaluate it and a you know a realistic size f for the pilot study not so small that it's not uh, statistically valid but not so large that it's you know onerous that's kind of the lengthy motion <laughs> you can yeah, but truncate that those are the thoughts i'd like to second it because but recognizing that this could be a great boon for the customers in this district because we've had, you know, rarely, at least once a month, we've had customers coming with asking for relief on water bills with after a ca catastrophic leak, leak, and we didn't have a good way of, we haven't had a really satisfactory way of dealing with that. So I think it has a great deal of potential and I think there's some support for that, but we can't, this is a WDO pro, uh, program and it has to demonstrate that saving water it's actually saving customers water on a regular basis and a predictable basis for it to be part of the WDO project. So are I'm you saying that you're open to it, mm -hmm. but you need more information? I'm seconding. <laughs> I'm seconding. <laughs> That's the motion, too. Is that the motion? Because I was just trying to... Yeah. I'm seconding Director Jaffe. Okay. Karen, is my motion too rambly? Um, I was having staff, trouble is it too rambly? focusing. <laughs> I have uh, worked with the developers to derive a WDO offset credit and design a pilot study that is not too arduous in size and length okay. and then come that's, back to you. That's good enough. Right. And the <laughs> part of that pilot would be a WDO offset. It wouldn't be, mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. So okay. we'll, we'll, I think the first place is start with the credit and see if that, yeah. if that works with the okay. developers. So yeah. we'll go there. Okay. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. That's uh, unanimous. Thanks for coming. And thanks for. So, but it sounds like they have customers that in this area that already. Come on, wait, wait, wait. Oh, sorry. It sounds like they have customers already adopted the system. So, if you guys already have a system that collects data and they have data, it might be good to go back. Well, the problem is, as I said, every home is different. So, some systems already have AMI. So. In those systems where you're actually getting, you know, daily updates, that might not save all that much. Whereas we have d updates every month, 
that well, can detect leaks, and there's some systems that don't detect leaks at all. Well, I'm thinking more like if they change their behavior of what our users more. Yeah, than that's that's part I, of it. I, yeah. I believe, if I understood you, it, 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 you were saying that if they have systems already in our water district, we might be able to use that. Sure, sure. Yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's a good idea. Yeah, I'm sure you take that into account mm -hmm. when developing the pilot. And so thank the WDO offset. Thanks for coming, and uh, yeah. I think it'll be interesting to work with you. So that's good. And if you need a tester for your software, my father-in-law would be very good. <laughs> <laughs> is he volunteering? Yeah. And we already have he several volunteers. Is he, is he sorry, vol yeah. sorry, Paul. We need people to volunteer to have leaks in their I homes. I think he's uh, saying that, <laughs> that he's one that couldn't use it. <laughs> I'm not saying that. <laughs> okay, item 6.3, approve request for quote for consultant services for development of finance plan and rate study. Yes, I'm gonna again cover this for Leslie since they're down at a training. Uh, you know, the district's been working for over a year now with a public advisory committee to try to enhance our rate structure, find a new one, what, you know, what would be better, even better for uh, our customers. And so, um, and that's been reported back to the board uh, a couple times, you know, our, our um, tiered rate and then the customer select model. So, at one of the finance administrative standing committee meetings on January 2nd, um, we presented some of this information and the committee recommended that we come back to the full board uh, with a request for quotes. Um, usually you think of that as request for qualifications, but actually a request for or quotes. Proposals. And um, for uh, rate consultants to do a 10 year plan and compare the customer select model against a tiered structure. So this is just the, in the SOQ or the uh, RFQ in this case is um, attached and we just want, uh, the motion is to authorize staff to distribute it to qualify consultants. Have any questions of staff? I have one. 10 years. That, that's not for the, that's, that's the planning horizon. Of, often you look okay. out to get an idea of, the, of your, your capital improvement projects or whatever okay. you got going on so you can kind of set it's the stage. The rate structure would be three to five at max. Yeah. 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 It just seems to me even planning 10 years is it gets It gets really tough difficult. because of interest rates, discount rates, and things like that, but you need to, it is prudent to at least have something that you can, uh, and we have a so model. It, it'll be done at a level where we can, uh, you know, that there'll be some information, but we won't rely on that heavily. We won't hang our hat on it, but it'll give us some, okay, direction this way. It's also a model that we can change in, uh, you know, consumption and that sort of thing. Just, just my experience yeah. is that Ten years there's is, no is, way. Yeah, no way. I agree, but it's, it's still a, a... Five years maybe, Yeah. but probably not a yeah. few years. Yeah, it goes uh, like this. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think one thing to note is that we currently are using the 2015 10-year finance plan that you approved, so this is an update. We approved yeah. that, huh? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, a lot of change, a lot of change already, and yeah, since yeah. then, so yeah, that, that proves your point. Any other questions? I had one question. Um, I think last time we did this, we had one firm do our finance plan, 10-year finance plan, and another firm do the rate study. So I'm wondering why they got merged. Yeah. First of all. Yeah. And second. In doing this finance plan, I don't see how any firm could really do it without basically sitting with our finance team and asking how much does this cost and what do you want to do about this? So I'm wondering, you know, our, our finance team is so great, why don't they just put together a finance plan 10 years and instead of hiring someone to basically ask them a bazillion questions about this, that, and the other thing. Uh, see, this is what happens when you miss a meeting. And yeah. you find <laughs> no, go ahead. Well, let, <laughs> let me answer that in part because this is sort of the basis of Prop 218 hearings. Okay. And one of the criteria that the courts have been looking at is, do you have an expert analysis to support this, these rates? Okay. And that usually requires an expert analysis to support your financing. Okay. And the courts look with some suspicion on internal sure. financing okay. approaches. Well, then why don't we find the best firm we can to do the um, finance plan and then find a, particularly for the rate study because that's got a weird thing that not many can do so that could perhaps rule out a lot of people who could do a great job with a finance plan yeah I mean in general you want them that you want the same firm doing both the reason it happened last time is just because of the tr transition time 
the firm Bartle Wells doing the 10 year plan and some decisions made in wanting to go out for the rate component. And you, you generally don't want to do that. It's like, you know, build half the automobile and then okay. the other half. Okay. Um, but we lived with it. It wasn't the optimum. I mean, the, actually, the rate consultant was at a disadvantage because they had to come back in and really understand some of the other nuances the to the model. Okay. Glad I asked the question. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, anyone in the public wish to address us on this item? Becky Steinbrenner um, of Aptos. I remember when your rate consultant came and there were some errors that were made and it cost the district a lot of money because you'd already put things out to the public and all that. So I really want to encourage you to make sure that whoever it is you hire to do that, that they have errors and omissions policies in place that will cover the cost of any errors like that. So the district rate payers are not um, expected to make up that, that cost. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Seeing no one, I will close that. Back to us. I'll move approval of the. Before you do that, there's one thing I think is wrong in here. Okay, go for it. It's on page 70. It's number four, plan overages. Um, and it mentions that um, automatically, uh, the the plan allotment are automatically switched on their next bill to the plan in which their usage occurred for the remainder of oh, the year. Yeah, we haven't decided on we that. We didn't decide on that, and I think that was one that we had a real problem with, because that right. means you could have 12 months of, you know, way up there. That's rates, a good point. Like, and we talked about having six months or three months or, or we have all yeah. kinds of possibilities. But it's definitely not been determined. Yes, yeah. So we so would I want them to actually look at various time frames yes. maybe three six or I 12 think months the plan switching above talks about that yeah although it's a little different switching a plan versus an overage well again this is talking about uh, you know there would be one time in the year when you could switch and then if you switched and the next month you had a, a, a you know whatever um this also doesn't talk about leaks i don't think um, we talked about that so there's a lot of things we talked about i think that are should be in here and aren't. <coughs> I definitely saw that one as something that we had not agreed on and had instead a lot of controversy about. And so we'd expect okay. whoever takes this on to come to us with a solution for all that. Right, right. We'll, yeah, and, right, and, I'll and, convey and that. Well, alternatives, maybe. Yep. The, the, other, the other discussion that I don't think it was, um, that there's agreement on is just on whether it, you know, just the the period for the plan. Is there same water rate? Does your water rate get set by your highest water rate in the summer, or is there a winter and a summer rate plan? That that I think I don't think we agree on on how that should be done. We're looking for direction on that. Okay. We had so lots of discussion and I don't some think things we were not different. resolved. Yeah. I'd say I agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> well, the question is whether, you know, whether these classes, and I think that was part of the problem in the previous rate study too, that things were set, but it was clear even from the one rate meeting I attended at the beginning that the rate consultants didn't have all the information. And in this case, we haven't actually developed all of the information that the rate consultant might have to use and it is sort of a problem um, if if it, that rate consultant relied on those five points that we really would want to need to hash that out this is a request for qualifications right well it's request for quotes what request for quotes for to do the work yeah. Yeah. yeah it's it's similar it's like a but con contract proposal yeah and you know, I'll have to talk to Leslie, but I, I know some of these ideas were still not fully baked, but that may be part of the the analysis. Maybe, you know, this one does it better, you know, this way does it better than the other, but I'll have to see how many. But the point is these uh, undecided things need to be put in there because we expect whoever takes on this contract to resolve these, which may require a lot of extra work that he might not think or she. Right, or to evaluate different variations. Yes, Correct. Yes, yeah, that's exactly. What I was right, right. Exactly. Okay. Okay, Evaluate um, the different options and come up with how much, what the pros and cons would be. All right. Um, yeah. 
So it, it can either come back to us okay. after it's more detailed or, you know, like the way that uh, number two on page 70 is, is, is written where achieve a structure, a number of plans and plan size widths, achieve a structure is fair and equitable and et cetera, et cetera. The plan switching and plan overages could be the same thing, you know, mm -hmm. ach achieve a structure that. So you use number two as kind of the guidance for the other ones. Yeah, just where, so where it's not set in stone, set in stone. yeah, that, okay. that, because they're the experts. Okay. They, they, they know what we want, and so they can come up with different options. Okay, so um, just to be clear, either we'll take that approach, make those items look more like item two, three, four, the other ones that are appropriate. Otherwise, we'll um, bring it back uh, for further agreement from the do board. You, do you think we should see it again? Yeah. Okay. You want to see it again before it goes out? Yeah. I do. Oh, all right. Everybody else do? I, ag I agree. No. I, this particular case. So we're taking no action then. Right. Okay. We'll bring it back. Okay. Anyone in the public wish to address us on this item that we're not doing anything about? Okay. Item 6.4, provide direction regarding sampling and monitoring of Aptos and Valencia Creeks. Right. And we, I think we have Mr. Alley in the audience to, tonight. Thank you for coming. So last week we brought, uh, or two weeks ago, we brought you back this proposal about uh, fish monitoring and the board decided to uh, not only contribute what we normally contribute to the countywide effort, but also uh, roughly around 10 grand to sample Soquel Creek. And the board asked us to come back and say, what would it also uh, cost uh, to sample Aptos and Valencia Creeks? So we brought that back to you tonight and the uh, cost range between seven and $10,000. The difference is um, if you sample the lagoon, which Mr. Alley uh, recommends, it's 10,000. If you don't sample the lagoon, it's seven, approximately seven. And um, yeah, and so what the motions are asking tonight is whether you wanna do nothing or the $10,000 uh, effort or the $7,000 effort. Uh, and I, I guess I will note that, and then just to, um, you know, for us to plan that in the next year's budget, well, what that would be, and then we still have to go through the process. But um, uh, the other little tidbit was fish and wildlife for sampling Aptos Creek too. So there was some thought that there might be some value. Fish and game. State fish and game, thank you, Carl. Um, fish and wildlife now. Oh, fish and wildlife. Fish and wildlife. So, some, the some, name has changed. So, yeah, uh, yes, right. And um, might be some value in, in cross-referencing that data potentially too. So anyway, I'll be glad to answer questions or Don would also. Any questions of staff? I guess I have one question I have. It's just that you know, these estimates are such nice round numbers, you know, but I don't see any detail on where they come from. And I was just wondering, like, is this just not to exceed? And then it's based on actual time and materials? Or? Well, I, I'll give the big summary and then Don, he gave me detailed spreadsheets. So okay. I just didn't attach them okay. to him because we were moving pretty fast. And, and uh, but I think actually one number was like $6,950 and the other one was 9857 okay. or something. I just rounded uh, for planning purposes. So he does have, you want to add to that, Don? Um, for the, the lower option, we'd sample four sites, two in Aptos and two in Valencia, which we've traditionally done. Um, we have a crew of three, uh, which is a minimal amount. A lot of people use four or more people in electrofishing. Um, we're also going to habitat type two segments in Aptos Creek to decide where to sample. Uh, in, the, in the lagoon, I've, I've scheduled uh, just four people to sample the lagoon, which is again a Spartan group, but we're in good shape and we have a lot of experience. The uh, sampling will be consistent. Uh, we've, we've been sampling Aptos and Valencia for a dozen years. 
Uh, we sampled the lagoon, we sampled it for four years, and then there was a three year gap, and then we sampled again last fall. So uh, there's, no, there's no fat in this uh, proposal, it's just a bare minimum. As far as working with uh, Cal Fish and Wildlife, I haven't been able to determine what they plan to do yet. Uh, but I would certainly coordinate with them uh, and hopefully we could y use each other's data to get as much power as we can out of it. Uh, I'm going to be talking to uh, Jennifer Nelson's uh, boss, if I can, to find out what she's planning there. Question? So I know you could answer this in an hour or more, but in just a few <laughs> sentences, I, I know why I think it's important, but why do you think this is important? In just a few sentences. Well, for one, for one thing, it, it'll, it'll be a comparison between Aptos and Soquel. So we've got two different watersheds. We'll see how each one is doing comparatively. Um, for Aptos, the lagoon is a very important habitat. And during the four years that we sampled it before, we found that the first year we got our estimate was 450 fish, but by the fourth year, we only had like a half a dozen fish that we caught. Uh, but then this last last fall, we had our estimate was about 185, so it went up during a wet year. And so there needs to be some guidance on the management of the lagoon down there. Okay. Uh, there's artificial uh, breaching, so the sampling will help determine what happens during dry years versus wet more clearly. Um, That's good. Uh, an important thing is that Aptos Creek is doesn't have a lot of diversions on it, doesn't have a lot of people on it, whereas Soquel does. So it's a good kind of a good comparison between high human impact and and less so. Okay, um, those those are good reasons. Okay, I would like to yeah note that occasionally the some of the state sampling plans don't pan out. They don't. They don't actually get to the, they don't actually do the sampling when they said they were going to do it. So, if for better or worse, if that happens, we have it covered with this, and we agree to the sampling. Yes, and uh, both Aptos and Soquel, um, the juvenile densities have gone down drastically. Uh, I was really pleased to see that, at least in Aptos last fall, the numbers went up. They didn't go up in Soquel. Uh, except in a, a couple of sites. Most, most of SoCal, we didn't get higher juvenile densities. We got fat, really faster growing fish. But uh, with these dry years, things are getting very tenuous. And I'd like to say something in relation to what Dr. LeHue Le mentioned uh, last meeting I was at where he was saying, well, what are we doing with all this data? Um, what good is it? Um, I worked very hard on a watershed management plan for SoCal Creek and we finished it in 2004. Um, I'd, I'd sampled the creek for about six years, fortunately, with Soquel Creek uh, Water District uh, funding. So I had a good idea of what the watershed was like, and then I spent two years studying the watershed more for the plan. Since then, we've had a number of drought years, and uh, unfortunately, very little of that plan was implemented. Uh, so there's a lot of projects in there that I developed that would certainly help the fish if they were implemented. So we need someone who really cares about the fish to try to implement the plan. So somebody's gonna, some agency's gonna have to have, have additional staff and then have the fishery biologist work, work with them to apply for funding if we're gonna get a change. It's not hopeless. And there are things we can do that don't relate to water use. Although I'm, I was really pleased to see these ideas about catching water leaks. It's very important and you're gonna have more people in your watershed as time goes on using water. But there are certainly things that can be done uh, that haven't been implemented. But if, if we have a mindset where um, the project's gotta be a win-win situation where humans win and fish win, those pr kind of projects are rather limited. At this point, you're going to have to you're going to have to be willing to to do projects where the fish win. People don't have to lose, but the fish win. 
We, j we always have the mindset, well, we're only going to do projects where humans win, and then if the fish happen to win a little bit, that's cool. Uh, we're not going to get anywhere. So it, it takes a change in mindset. Yeah, well, we're not doing any projects for that but tonight, but uh, yeah. the sampling is the issue. So, Anyone in the public wish to address this on this item? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Becky Steinbrunner of Aptas. I'm um, I'm curious about the um, <coughs> it, what I remember last time that there seemed to be a disconnect between the work that Mr. Ali has done and is doing, and what Fish and Wildlife has done and is doing. And I'm I'm curious about that disconnect. It doesn't make sense to me as a citizen when you've got all this work going on that there isn't coordination. So I would. I would like to ask for um, someone to come from Fish and Wildlife, perhaps Jennifer Nelson, as he said, and talk with you about you know this whole picture. I also think that, um, that I'm, I'm hearing talk about Aptos Creek, but I'm not hearing much talk about Valencia. And it's a completely different creek with a lot of problems. So I would like to have a little more information about uh, what this sampling entails on Valencia. And um, I think it's important to, to do not only fish counts, but stream flows, especially since the district has just put in a new, very large and deep well at Granite Way that may change the stream flows potentially in that area. Um, I think this could be very good information to submit uh, as baseline information for the Mid-County Groundwater Agency's plan for sustainability uh, factors um, that must be submitted to the state by 2020. So thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else? See no one, we'll bring it back to the board. It's your pleasure. Uh, I'm gonna, I, I will make a motion for item for number one. I think it's important to sample creek, uh, the the lagoon at the same time as we, uh, if we were to go for the rest of the rest of the two creeks, I think the lagoon is really important too. It's worth the extra money. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 That's unanimous. Yep. Okay, we Thank now you. go on to some written communication. We have two of them. The first one has a, I think a proposed uh, response. Does it? Yeah. No. I believe the second, the second one. one. Yes. Uh, yeah. So I'm I'm asking the board if they approve that draft response so we could send it out to uh, Mr. Stanton, I believe. I. Looks good to me. Looks good to me. Yeah. Likewise. Okay. okay. Thank Do you, you need a motion? Uh, no, that's good enough. Is there public Consensus comment? is good. Yeah. Yeah. Any public comment on either of these letters? None. Um, yeah, I think these are okay. Okay, we'll send out the response in. Thank you. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we now go to a closed session. Two items on the agenda. Mm -hmm. Thanks everyone for coming. No written material, right? No. <laughs>